Welcome to the Planet Boom Youth Leadership Podcast. A podcast for youth leaders, youth pastors, and young leaders who have a passion to grow in their leadership and a desire to be empowered to lead their generation. Keep listening to check out our latest episode. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Welcome to our ninth episode. Here we are, Youth Leadership Podcast, Planet Boom resource. Thanks for being with us. We've had a great time so far. I am here today with Noah Walker. Yes. And we are going to be talking about preaching Mm. to teenagers. Mm. Before we do, don't forget, like and subscribe. Check out all our earlier episodes as well. Follow us on socials, everything at Planet Boom, and, uh, and you'll just have a great time. So we're talking about preaching to teenagers and it's important that we say it is to teenagers and that does matter. I hear lots of people, you know, complain about like, oh, you don't water things down for, for the young people. No, of course don't water it down. But there are a lot of people around the world trying to minister to people and they're totally disconnected from the people they're trying to minister to. That's not what we want. We have to have an understanding of where they're at and part of where they're at is young. Yes. They're young. Young. And that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not bad. God doesn't hate them for being young. Um, we have to have an awareness of what matters and what connects with young people when we preach. So we're just discussing this. We've got a few points each. Yeah. What matters to you uh, when, you, when, when you're preaching to teenagers? What's important? Give me one point. Well, in preparing, I guess, to speak to teenagers in a, um, yeah, in a service, mm. a Friday night service, service. Um, I would definitely aim at having... A lot of stories. Stories. Um, the great good. thing about stories is that, one, it opens your life up to them, mm. uh, but, two, it gives them an opportunity to relate uh, to you. Totally. And uh, I've found um, in the short time that I have been speaking that stories are very, um, very effective in opening up a teenager's heart. I remember telling some stories of, um, me getting bullied when I was young by my brother and my sister and, you know, some of the names that they would call me. and it's not funny. Yeah, well, I mean, it was funny to uh, for the story. I'll, should I say the story? Yeah, well, the story was um, me having skid marks on my undies when I was <laughs> six years old and I remember getting bullied by my brother and my sister and so I shared that story of... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I obviously related it back to the Word of God and Somehow. what I was speaking about. Um, but it was evidence, um, and that's what the whole point was, <laughs> evidence of skid marks. And sometimes we, uh, we find that, not sometimes, but we do find in the Word of God that there is evidence, and it's right there in front of you just like those skid marks. So um, a lot of those stories I Google think, it if you don't know it. <laughs> Google it. Skid marks. Yeah, they're like, no, it yeah, doesn't matter. Right. Yes. So stories, story, stories are important. You are a great storyteller, as we just witnessed. But I think every great youth communicator, they're, they're great storytellers yeah. and there's a reason for it. And, um, well, Jesus was a great storyteller. Yeah. That's literally what he did with, um, with all through the Gospels. You know, all of his messages, they were attached to, yeah. to stories. Yeah. You were going to say something. Yeah, I think, and I think it's important to really tell stories really well. I think sometimes in in storytelling you can cut off certain details or certain parts that would add a bit of extra juice towards the, I guess, the point you're trying to push across. It's super important to tell the full story. And even, I don't know, have having sometimes, I like sometimes in my notes when I'm writing up a thing, I'll have sometimes, I've, you, you sometimes forget things to say certain things. And so I'll remind myself to say, uh, I'm sorry to bring it back to the skid mark story, but <laughs> I, I'd remind myself to bring it back to that place, um, to like different points of the story where my mum knew that I had skid marks because she washed all my clothes, but I'd go to my mum for her support and tell, you know, get them to tell, get her to tell my brother and sister that they're lying, but, you know, she would know. And th- those types of things all add up to the, 
uh, and all make a good story and it all pushes the point across. Yeah, there, there's there's different ways to tell the same story. Yeah. And sometimes like, uh, or even when people are telling testimonies, it's like you can draw out something about what God did or you can totally skim over it yeah. and it makes a difference to whether it actually connects with people or mm. not. So the stories are so important at connecting with them because connecting with teenagers because that's what we want to do. We want to connect them to the Word of God. It, yeah. We're not replacing the Word of God yeah. with our own stories. We're using our stories to connect them with what the Word of God means yeah. to their lives, right? Something on the other end of things that I would say that's really important is repetition. In what? So, so we both are talking about preaching. We're not talking about being guest preachers, right? We're talking about preaching to a youth ministry where, where maybe they're all term. Like think about 10 weeks in a row. And you're thinking about what, what is it that young people need to know to grow in God. One of the first things that Pastor Russell and Sam said to me and Susanna when we became the youth pastors, it was if you feel like, if you feel like you are repeating yourself over and over again, then you're probably doing the right thing. That's just part of youth ministry. It doesn't mean they're not getting it. It means that there will there will always be some things that will always be important. Yeah. So, like, I guess you end up finding 10 different ways to say the same thing or to preach the same message. I reckon I've probably got, if I look through my notes, I've probably got 15 messages that with different titles, but they're actually the same message. And they probably use some different like analogies each time, but they're probably still the same message about being saved or the same message about, you know, forgiveness of sin or something basic. So I think as well, something that will always be important in preaching to teenagers, keep it foundational. Like, it, again, it doesn't mean that it has to be too basic, but it's understanding that what we want to do here is not just stir their emotions. We yeah. do want to stir their emotions because their emotions are powerful connectors with God, but we also want to build something that they will still be walking with Jesus in 20 years because of some of the things that they've learned with the time that they were with you. So I think over the years, I found, man, with the things that I'm preaching, I'm always coming back to foundational things because we're always building this foundation. And also, if you want to reach out to young people and have constantly have new people in your youth ministry, then you have to keep going over foundational things. There's no way you can get around it. Exactly. I think in praise and, um, uh, for, for example, praise, leading praise, mm -hmm. it's... A, it's a repetition because sometimes you can come back from different holidays. Teenagers can come back from different holidays and <clears throat> it's almost like within a week, four days, they forget, they forget everything that they, that they were taught and boom, I mean, in a, in a youth setting and uh, in the, on the Friday night and they've literally forgot everything on how to encounter God and it's pretty, it's pretty crazy but obviously uh, these things happen and so it's important to keep that repetition and teaching them over and over again how to uh, receive, how to praise, how to worship, all those sorts of things. 100%. I think it's really important to say this because <clears throat> if you're hearing this, maybe what will be encouraging to you is to know that it's not just you that has to do that. Every youth ministry everywhere around the world has to repeat the same things over and over again because young people are young people. And maybe, you know, like there are some youth groups that have predominantly like church kids in there. They've grown up in church. So maybe you're able to move a bit quicker because maybe they have some of that foundational stuff. We have a pretty outreach-focused youth ministry, so there's, there's what, on any Friday night, there could be between 50 to 100 new people in the room. So there's a fair amount. So you can't just assume that people know stuff because they don't, so you've got to keep going over it. But if you're a good communicator, then you can keep saying um, repetitive things without it getting boring to teenagers because you can be creative, which I think is another key. Be creative. Mm. How do you add creativity into preaching? Um, well, to be honest, I always, I'm, I'm an observer and so I, I like to look at different ways on how people communicate and how they bring across the Word of God in a relevant and fresh way. I think one of the things that helped me a lot is, is um, uh, bringing... I watched, uh, if you guys know Chris Hill, um, he spoke at a Planet Checkers conference years and years ago and I watched him online. I was there. <laughs> years and years ago. <laughs> oh, so I was actually there. I was very young though. <laughs> and I watched, I watched him and I watched some of the elements that he added into his 
uh, communication and his preaching. And he was, it was almost like a, a drama sort of segment sort of thing in a way that... Sort of thing. Sort of thing, where it, it gripped people's anticipation and it was like this roller coaster of um, excitement and, and fun and joy and praise and worship and moments of, like, worship. And, you know, it, it, was, it was really awesome to look at that. And so I, I think adding different sorts of... Um, I don't know, like examples and illustrations are super important to keep teenagers, especially their attention span, uh, to go past 10 minutes because mm. we all know that their attention spans are very short. But it's definitely, and I think you're very good with um, illustrations in terms of using different uh, items and different <laughs> and different creative things like um, you know, would you give, would you like to give an example of illustrations that you use? Gosh, <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I forget so quickly, but it, it is important. And and um, like we use music a lot because yeah. that's a that's a, a a gift that we both have. So we've definitely done that over the years. It's like preaching in and out of one of the songs about the message of the song and mm-hmm. going like that's been a key for us or. Yeah, some illustrations on stage, you know, with props or with object lesson type of, of things. Young people learn visually so yeah. so well as well rather than just hearing something for 20 or 30 minutes, being able to see something that relates back to a message, back to a lesson that I can apply to my spiritual walk is so powerful. I think it's really worth saying because I know that I know some of you, maybe you lead youth ministries that are like me, but there's so many different churches and so many different styles. And I know sometimes uh, people's response, like if you are trying to get young people to respond, then it must be shallow. Mm-hmm. But I see that, you know, that attitude a little bit of being like, hey, don't hype them up. If there's hype, then it means they're not getting the, the meat of the word. And I would totally reject that. I, I, of course, it can be like that. And we've all probably witness preaching where it's been all about the hype and no one's actually learning anything, but it doesn't mean that it's all like that. We want to use the people responding to the Word of God so that they actually get and understand what it is that we're trying to, you know, that, that God is wanting to do. So let's not misunder, misunderstand, let's not underestimate the, um, the power of responding to the Word of God. I think that is so important. So I I always remember um, early on with trying to prepare for preaching for teenagers, I would pray and I would start at the end and work my way backwards. So what is it that I'm believing that the Holy Spirit wants to do in this meeting? So maybe it's like I was, maybe we're going after salvation message. Okay, I'm believing for teenagers to get saved. And I would pray into that moment and believe, okay, and then I'd work backwards from there. So then how do we set them up for that to respond in that way? What is the message that fits with that? What does God want to say? And then, of course, dive deep into the Word of God so that you can get some meat behind it, even though what I'm preaching might be quite simple, but I want to have a greater understanding in you know, in what I've studied than what it is that I'm preaching. But I would I would go from the end because responding, getting teenagers to respond to the word, whether it's to salvation or or to worship or whatever it is, um, we want them to apply this message, not just hear it. We want them to be doers of the word, not just hearers. That's scriptural. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense to me. Hmm. Yep. Do you remember the message that you actually got saved in at a camp? And there was, I remember, something very simple that I got everybody to do, but was to turn your heart and then God brings about the change. But I got everybody in the room, if you want to respond, we literally turned our bodies one way. And then if we wanted to respond to Jesus, we turned around. But it was a really simple key that the Holy Spirit gave me. And then I wasn't going to do much more from that point. I was going to allow the Holy Spirit to move while we worshipped. But it was getting young people to do something physical and visible to represent what they were responding to in their heart from what they'd heard from the Word of God. And you were one of those young people that, that did respond. Yeah. You yeah. turned your heart to God. Exactly. And I do remember, um, I don't remember much of the message, to be honest, because I was, I don't know, I was, re- yeah, I was pretty distracted as a young person is. But I do remember that moment and I do remember standing up and doing that action and it was a, 
Exactly. It was a prophetic moment, but also, what, like, um, like you were saying, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was that statement for me to, and an action for me to go. Oh yeah, I'm going to turn my heart from the world to Jesus, and so. Yeah, those illustrations and those little actions and prophetic actions are super, um, super key because teenagers, like you were saying, you can hear but not necessarily do. But mm. doing something to act on what you've heard and received is mm. a super powerful thing. As what well. do you do? I reckon people get in two flows here. They either have their notes and they stick to their notes exactly or they ramble and they don't even know what's in their notes. How do you find the balance between... Okay, I've got the message and I've prepared for it, but I want to be open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. <laughs> when How do you do that? I, when I first first started speaking, I remember having <laughs> it's so embarrassing, but it's it happens, and because I was so um, not used to remembering things. If you know me, I I I say things and I don't know where I'm going sometimes, and I can just ramble on, <laughs> like you were saying. But I. <laughs> We're maybe we're all guilty of that. <laughs> but I remember um, early on when I started speaking, I literally wrote everything that I was going to say, like from start to finish. Did you read it off the thing, like a script? No, I wouldn't read it off you? the. I wouldn't read it off the script off off my iPad and go like this, mm-hmm. like a like a presentation at a school. Like I wouldn't do that. That's a vibe, though. But I would have everything that I would say. Um, word for word. Word for word because I would forget, like I would genuinely forget what I'm actually speaking about because I I would either go on some sort of tandem and speak about this or I'd go on a do a worship song. But now I sort of limited it to, I don't know, certain certain words that remind me of those yeah. types of, um, uh, of remind me of what I'm supposed to say in certain times. Like I'll have um, different Stories, and I'll just write the start of it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll put in a, in a point saying the story of when you had skid marks. I know <laughs> it's a classic story for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would. I, I remember doing going from there to there and being able to uh, keep my mind on what I'm speaking about. But I don't genuine generally go full from top to bottom because sometimes God just does whatever He does, and the Holy Spirit takes. Mm takes you into a different place and he pushes onto a different point. And so not all the time where I go from top to bottom and I read out everything that I'm that I put there. It's for me it's a lot of ideas that I put on yeah. a, on a on a point. It's good. Point. I, I remember having um because I like a I like a good plan to be honest. And I would some, there'd been moments of boom over the years where I would Stick to this plan. And I'd feel something in my heart, like something would get my attention or I'd feel the Holy Spirit wanting to do something, but I would almost go, no, nah, no, nah, I've got to stick to my notes. Mm. And then I'd miss that moment. And then I'd try and take it to this moment at the end and I'd realise, oh, I actually missed the moment to do that because mm. God was already moving. And um, I definitely, uh, one of the biggest lessons for me is how to talk less. Um, that's just been one of those things. I can I can ramble I like communicating, right? I like talking something through because that's how it makes sense to me. But especially at the start, bro, you weren't there, but I would have to like cut things down to like I'd have so much detail and try and keep it as simple as I could. And now nowadays speaking to teenagers, I, I try and keep things so simple and um, so that there is some some room within that to be led by the Holy Spirit. And um, so I think that's that's a key from us. Everybody's going to have their strengths. you got to work with your strengths. But I, I think some keys from us and what we bring in, Boom, is that creativity is always important. Keep things foundational. Don't worry if you're repeating yourself. Mm. Use stories and illustrations and analogies, all of those kinds of things, as much as you can to link the Word of God to people's experiences and where they're at. But make room for the Holy Spirit. We want to teach them the meat of the Word, foundational things in the Word, but it's the Holy Spirit breathing upon His Word that, that makes it make sense to people's heart. So, so don't cram it full of all your stories and all your stuff that then there's no room for what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And non-negotiable for us in, in Boom is that we always allow time in the, in, the, in the run sheet for response, ministry time, salvation response, but then <clears throat> whatever response it is to the Word that's been preached because that's really where, where the change happens yeah. and when people connect what I've just heard with where my life is at.
And so if you are not doing that in your youth services, try it. Try it. Carve out some time. Talk less. Do one less song. Do less worship at the start. Come back to worship at the end and, and, and allow that in the ministry because their hearts are going to be more open then anyway and probably yeah. more responsive. So, um, hey, there's some, some tips from us today communicating to young people. If you've got any questions, you want us to talk about any of those things more, we want to connect with you, you can email us at planetboomresource at planetshakers.com. It's going to be on the screen. Also, you can head to our Boom Resource page at planetshakers.com forward slash planetboomresources. We want to hear from you. And uh, join us next time on our Planet Boom Youth Leadership Podcast.